All right, now we're starting to move away, transition from kind of the, the neuropsychology stuff to, to maybe focusing a little bit more on managing some of the emotions and things like that. Um, arousal, anxiety, and stress. These things are oftentimes associated with each other. They're very interrelated, but they are not the same things. And, and that's going to be something that's very, very important for us. And as we start differentiating between all of these different things, we're going to kind of think about in the back of our mind the stress process, which is loosely defined kind of as basically you have a situation in the environment with all the different things that are occurring with it and whatever you know kind of information is coming from the stadium or the environment, whatever it is that's going to influence you, the individual um, is able to take that information and kind of how do they deal with it and their response is to all of the stuff all the uh, the information that's coming from this particular situation. Now we'll get more into this model and it'll be a different one, all this kind of stuff later on. But um, one of the things I really want to kind of talk about is we talk about managing moods and emotions. And, um, you know, there are a lot of different emotions. Anxiety is only one. And so when we talk about emotions, we need to know that a mood and an emotion are not the same thing. And then there are multiple emotions. Okay, an emotion is generally a little bit more of a situationally specific sudden reaction. Doesn't normally last as long. Moods tend to be a little bit more long lasting, a little bit more amorphous. Um, and, and, and so some emotions can be indicative of a mood. Um, but oftentimes emotions are going to be those, those, those smaller things, the, the quick reactions, that type of thing. Another thing is just a, just a word on the word affect. I um, mean, you know, we talk about cause and effect with an E, and that's different than sort of the effective nature of something. So affect is just a general term that's going to be used for um, referring to emotions and moods and how these things are going to be processed by the individual and usually indicative of the environment around them. So what is stress? We talk about this a lot, and people are always, I'm so stressed. And, and some people are like really freaking out when they say it. Others are are kind of laughing when they say it. And so, what is stress? Well, there's there's your little specific definition of stress. One of the things interesting about that definition, non-specific response. They didn't say it was bad. They didn't say there was a specific response that the body was supposed to have to it. And so, one of the things that we find is that stress and pressure, these things are going to be different. And that you can actually bifurcate stress into two different types of stress. You stress, which is actually good, and distress, which is the more negative crippling one that we tend to associate with this concept of stress. And so you stress is talking about, you know, if you're going to like, well, to build a muscle physiologically, right? You have to stress that muscle. You have to break down those fibers and things like that. And once you do that, then it can start to grow and it can start to evolve and change. And so if you didn't have some stress in an environment, you could make the argument that performance for many individuals and humans wouldn't be as, as, as high level. All right, so some stress is actually good. I mean, I've, I've gone jogging. Whew, that's, that's a stress to my body. Yeah, I hear that it's good for me, okay? Uh, now everything is within kind of moderation, so the line between you stress and distress is a fine one, and it's one that's gonna change for each individual organization environment. Uh, stress and the whole idea of, of the body being aroused oftentimes and that don't don't take that in a weird way okay but like the body being activated and engaged these things are going to be correlated all right so if you have high high levels of good stress the you stress then oftentimes the body is going to function as, at an optimum level if you have high levels of distress then the physiological arousal is going to be low and the body's not going to be engaged as much and the, and the connection between the mind and the body is going to be much further apart and so performance generally is going to be lower. So that's how all of these things work together. Again, we're starting to try to get away from the, talking about the physiology and the, and the body of it, but these things are going to be associated with the mind. It's going to be associated with anxiety. It's going to be associated with stress and how we process it. And so if you study the, the, pre, the stress processes that I have, you'll see that there's, there's three basic parts of the stress process. All right, Distress, especially, is going to occur if the coping skills that we've talked about before are not necessarily adequate and don't necessarily provide the resolution that the individual needs. So what you have, again, we've, we've shown this before, right? So you have the environment, you have the stimulus, you have the information, the individual, 
is is kind of looking at bringing in taking in that information and and trying to decide what to do with it and then eventually you have a response all right well right through here during this situation appraisal and the response that's where you're going to be talking about coping mechanisms you know this is another way of kind of looking at it is that you you have you know the stress response to something you know if it's distress or if you're talking about different aspects of coping and you know, we've talked about coping before and if you're talking about behavioral coping or more cognitive coping cognitive coping is how you're going to calm yourself down the behavioral aspect of or the intervention of coping tends to be a little bit more associated in a team environment and so you know what happens when you have all of these different things operating together and where do they oftentimes operate one of the one of the interesting places to really examine these things this whole idea of the stress response is being nervous you know what happens leading up to an event an athletic event all right so you have the cognitive anxiety this is going to start really high you're going to be super nervous right before your soccer match or whatever it is that you're going to be involved with all right and it remains high as as the event as the competition is approaching and then probably actually is going to fluctuate throughout as you feel you know if you're in a blowout and you're, you're let's say you're in a soccer match and you're up seven to two then your cognitive anxiety is probably going to be lower at the end when you're ahead and you see that that the match is is really going to be in your favor okay that's that's talking with the mind the emotions that type of thing somatic anxiety remember that's the bodily response all right, so the nervousness, the, uh, you know, there were some famous, um, you hear like some famous examples of athletes. Um, Fred Belitnikoff, for one, was a, was a famous receiver in both not only college but also the NFL, and he used to throw up for every single game. All right, that's a bodily response to anxiety. I mean, can you imagine puking before every single game for 12 or 15 years, uh, and, and maybe even longer? It starts low but increases very very rapidly the closer you get to kickoff for example now once you go out there the ball's been kicked off if we're dealing with the football game and then you know oftentimes they talk about the first hit that you take and you're in the game the somatic anxiety really starts to decrease at a very very high rate All right again managing emotions are going to be done on a couple different ways because they have manifestations in a couple different ways they, they impact the mind they impact the body and stress whether good or bad has to be managed if you stress is not managed correctly then it can turn into distress very quickly understanding that anxiety is just one emotion and that's different than the mood of the individual the mood of the clubhouse as it were